Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to uh, support the Leader of the Nationals uh, with this motion that this House condemns Bill Shorten and the Federal Labor Party for its destructive plan to shut down WA's live export industry and calls on the McGowan government to stand up and fight to save an industry which generates hundreds of jobs in Western Australia. And I emphasise the jobs part of it because that is the mantra of this government. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And if this uh, export industry goes down, there's probably three and a half thousand jobs that will be lost. So I certainly um, call on the McGowan government to um, stand up and fight to save that industry. Mr. Mr. Remember that they're prepared to change state agreements for three thousand dollars. But oh, yeah. that's right. Not a problem. Not a problem. Uh, Acting Speaker, I certainly <coughs> don't want uh, federal labour doing deals in inner Melbourne seats trying to dictate what happens in the WA sheep industry. And that's really what happens. We see these preference deals being done. Uh, we've got to protect our inner in Melbourne seats to look after the, uh, the green element uh, in inner Melbourne, inner Sydney. And I can confirm actually for the leader of uh, the Nationals that Bill Shorten has not consulted and he hasn't been over the Darling Scarp in the last couple of years. He did go to Kalgoorlie for three hours the year before last. So that, that is the extent of his consultation in the regions of WA. So for us to have the fate of the WA live export sheep industry in the hands of Bill Shorten, Joel Fitzgibbon and the Honourable Alana McTiernan, uh, heaven forbid if the, w, if the Labor Party the federal opposition is elected on Saturday. That's all I can say. And acting speaker, I'm a, um, I'm a farmer with a farm between Katani and Kojanup, and that farm has always been predominantly sheep. So I've got a very strong understanding of how the uh, live sheep export industry works. Uh, over the last uh, 35 to 40 years, we've sold sheep through the, uh, through the live export trade. And I understand how important the, this industry is. And it's really important because, as the numbers dictate, we've got 1.7 million sheep that are actually sold into the live export industry. And there's 3.8 million sheep that are uh, put through our processing industry. So that's about a third of the sheep in WA. And that's a really important part of the price mechanism as well um, within our WA livestock industry. And probably my, my, uh, my community of Katanning is probably more involved in the sheep and the live sheep industry than any other town in Australia. Uh, when you look at it, the Katanning sale yards recently uh, built the largest undercover sale yards in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, around about 25,000 odd sheep that can be put undercover, up to 30,000 at times if necessary. And that's been a, uh, a fantastic, um, fantastic asset to the, uh, the community of Katanning and the, uh, the, great, the whole Great Southern, to be honest. Um, and it was actually good to see the member for Armidale uh, ventured into the Katanning sale yards uh, the year before last, just to, just to improve his knowledge, improve his knowledge about the, uh, the sheep industry. So. Uh, I know the people of Katanning and surrounds are very appreciative of you uh, coming along there. Very good, uh, thanks Member for Armidale. And um, can I also add in that WAMCO, the, uh, the state's um, largest sheep processor, uh, with around about 350 employees, is also an integral part of the, uh, the sheep industry. So we've got both in Katanning. We've got the, uh, the sale yards, we've got buyers there buying for uh, the live export industry. And then we've also uh, got WAMCO, which exports to uh, US, Europe, um, and so forth. So we've got, we've got every angle covered. And what I want to point out is that WAMCO, WA Meat Marketing Cooperative, they have been struggling for many years to actually get the labour required for their processing industry. So when when some of our members opposite make these sweeping statements that, uh, oh no, well we can just process everything in, in Western Australia, not a problem. Those 1.7 million extra sheep 
cannot be processed in Western Australia. Um, firstly, because they're not always suitable for processing. But secondly, we cannot physically get the labour. And that's part of why, uh, that's part of why our multicultural community in Katanning exists, because a lot of our labour comes from the uh, Burmese community, the Chinese community, the Afghan, and of course, um, as uh, Minister for Heritage there knows, the, um, the uh, Christmas and Cocos Island population, which came in in 1975, and they were a large part of the stability of the workforce of WAMCO. So I just want to point that out because it's very important that there is an understanding. I know. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Member for Armidale. <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, look, hopefully uh, I get on well with the large majority of my electorate. Thanks, uh, thanks, Minister. Um, but look, the uh, WAMCO, when I look at it, I, I regularly communicate with um, Cole McCrory, Managing Director, uh, Tony Bessel, Manager of the Katanning Works, and Nigel Aitken, who actually goes out every morning in the minibus to pick up workers because that's how hard it is to actually get a full um, roster of workers at, at the Katanning plant. Now, so, I I knew there was a uh, reason why you strayed into the electorate of Roe uh, recently there, uh, Minister. But uh, look, having said that, uh, having said that, WAMCO does a fantastic job. Uh, we're, we're very proud of uh, the way they work. And uh, I think they're a, a great asset for the, uh, the great southern community. And when I look at it, I think live export is a, it's an integral part of sheep farming from uh, Esperance right through to Geraldton and also covers many parts of the, uh, the pastoral areas as well. It's a $200 million industry and as the leader of the Nationals pointed out, 86% um, 80, of the national market for live export is sourced in Western Australia. And you just can't flick the switch and say that we will process everything in Western Australia. It doesn't work like that. Many of the sheep aren't necessarily suitable to process, as I said. Uh, they might be 33 or 34 kilo live weight, where the lambs, they're only score one, and they're just not suitable to process. And they don't fit into a market. And I think this is where there's a distinct lack of understanding uh, from many within the, uh, within the Labor Party, um, perhaps not state Labor Party, but certainly federal, certainly Bill Shorten has got absolutely no understanding and I believe Joel Fitzgibbon has got maybe slightly more, but not much more. So apart from uh, those sheep not being suited for processing, um, there's not necessarily the markets for that, that type of product. And um, this is where I become concerned when we've got the Honourable Alana McTiernan, our Ag Minister, talking, talking to our Middle East markets about how we can just change from uh, live sheep to uh, exporting chilled product. It demonstrates her lack of understanding. And I think I've got an article here from the West Australian um, 22nd of May 2018 where um, it quotes that Australia's biggest live sheep customer has confirmed it has started looking elsewhere for supply amid suggestions Australia could stop the trade. And this is another one of the, this is Al Mawashi, the Kuwait based uh, livestock trading company. And they were concerned because for the past 40 years they've been buying up to two thirds of their um, 1.8 million head of sheep that are exported out of Western Australia. So when we, have our, when we have our state agriculture minister suggesting to them, suggesting to the, uh, uh, the Qatar government as well that yes, you know, the trade is going to end, uh, there's a possibility, uh, you better start looking for your sheep elsewhere because 
there's a good possibility we're going to end our live, live export industry. And that, that was really concerning to me when I, when I heard about that last year. Um, and what, what she fails to understand is that chilled product, yes, we all agree that's good, but there is very limited refrigeration in some of these countries. And what will happen is that the live export product will be replaced by sheep from Somalia, Sudan, Ethiopia, and many other countries, and this is what I worry about. People haven't thought at the next level, I can assure you, I can assure you the animal welfare standards of those countries are nowhere near what Australia has. So I just want to bring that to people's attention because I, I believe that hasn't been um, talked about enough. I, uh, and I think I'd just like to go through a bit of a timeline from last year of um, what the activities of our party were. The leader of the Nationals did talk about some of those. And I think we, we all saw the, the vision, which no one found acceptable, uh, and which I might like to add is now under police investigation. Uh, so that, that's something to keep in mind about its authenticity. And it was also, as I said, when I came down here last year one night to talk about animal welfare, um, it was like a military operation. It was a military operation. That vision was on, it was held. It was held by those uh, putting out that footage, held back for six months. So if they were really interested in animal welfare, they wouldn't have held it for six months. And then the Monday morning, we all come into our parliamentary office. There's the, uh, the book on uh, live export, the welfare, animal welfare issues. So I certainly questioned that last year. Um, I did have some grief from, uh, you know, the likes of the member for Maylands and Balcatta, uh, member for uh, Thornley. And um, I was trying to explain to, um, to the member for Belmont as well about how we, um, we actually care for our animals on farm. We don't want to see anything happen to them. It's in our interest to uh, produce a good quality animal. Uh, the better the quality of animal, the better the return. And um, to the credit of the member for Belmont, she um, spoke to me afterwards um, about that. And I think it's a really important issue to understand that, that we are, as farmers, very interested in the welfare of our animals. So look, moving on, uh, the Nationals, we went to the first meeting at um, Darkin. Uh, the Compass Agricultural Group put it together. That was straight after the, rea the, the immediate reaction to the group. Leader of the Nationals, uh, the Honourable Colin de Grusser and myself turned up. Uh, 150 sheep farmers, and they were a positive group. They were suggesting improvements that could be made. Um, unfortunately, no one from the, uh, the State Labor Party turned up. So the, the party that says it's the regional party for Western Australia, a major issue of our whole sheep industry, no one turned up. Uh, disappointing, to say the least. Uh, then, of course, we had the, the, the Katanning meeting with over 1,000 people, uh, MC'd by Owen Greve, uh, you know, the likes of uh, John Hassel, the candidate for O'Connor now, who's uh, uh, also sort of chaired part of the meeting. Uh, WA Farmers Federation, several other colourful characters there. The S several other colourful characters the there. And um, I will say it was a passionate meeting uh, and I will give credit to the Honourable Alana McTiernan. She did turn up. She defended her position. She defended her position. And, you know, that wasn't a bad effort considering there was, um, there was a thousand odd uh, farmers and people in the, in the industry there. And what we listened to, we would listen to stories of how important this industry is to the people of regional WA. Uh, we, had, uh, we had Chloe McDougall there, a farmer from Dumbleyung, uh, two young children. Uh, very, uh, very uh, important to her farming family, to her farming family, the continuity of this industry. We had Alan McFarlane from Catanning Furnishings telling us how important it is to the uh, business sector of the Great Southern. 
Ben Poet, who has carted my sheep over the years. Uh, fantastic young guy, young family. He had not been able to cart a load of sheep for four months. Four months, a uh, member for Armidale. And honestly, the continuity of his, uh, of his business uh, was really affected by this, this um, cessation, I guess you could call it. Then we had um, Maco Feeds as well. And the industry of Maco Feeds, 90% uh, of their um, business is about supplying pellets to the live export industry. So I, th I think there's a lack of understanding about the flow on effects. And this is the three and a half thousand people that are affected, the three and a half thousand people that are affected by, um, by this industry. And of course, then we have the, uh, the livestock shipping companies themselves, LSS, Emanuels and Wellards, who I might add, the likes of Wellards, have spent um, several tens of millions of dollars getting their ships up to, uh, up to a, a high standard. Um, from there, from there, the Honourable Colin de Grusser and I, we went to Canberra. We asked the Federal Minister, David Littleproud, if he could come across. Uh, he came across, as uh, leader of the Nationals mentioned, consulted, went out to Beverley, spoke to growers there. We had a forum as well in Parliament House with uh, many of the relevant parties, the, uh, the transporters, the shearing associa association, uh, the feed industry, uh, farmers, of course. Uh, and he really consulted well. And then, uh, then we took Minister Littleproud to the Catanning Sale Yards to look at the facility, to talk to growers, to talk to agents, to talk to the, the buyers who buy sheep uh, for the industry and, and for the abattoirs. The Nationals have done everything we can to consult, to improve communication and to try to help the industry at a state level. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to... Um, can I have a short extension? Yes, extension, uh, Thank you, uh, Acting Speaker. I'd like to congratulate the Sheep uh, Collective and Holly Ludeman as a vet who has got a full understanding of the live export industry and the ships. And I'd like to congratulate them on what they have done in actually inviting all members of parliament, all industry groups, to actually come and have a look Come and have a look how the sheep are loaded. Come and have a look how it works. And uh, I'd like to thank those members who have actually taken up that opportunity to improve their knowledge from this house and the other house. Um, very important because as we know now, mortality is down to below 0.4 of 1%. That's actually less than what you, what you get if you leave the sheep out in the paddock on the farm. Uh, there's less density in the pens. Uh, there's, uh, there's obviously the three month ban which the actual uh, industry itself has actually um, placed on itself. So that's, that's really interesting to me how they've, they've actually made those changes proactively. And I, I certainly congratulate um, the industry on that, uh, those elements to take those strides over the last 18 months and to improve the welfare in, um, outcomes and also improve their social licence. Because I think we all acknowledge that that probably was something that needed to happen. And if I can just highlight one disappointment for me, I guess, is that the state government has not provided any correspondence to indicate consultation with the federal opposition has taken place. I'm not aware of any consultation uh, acting speaker. Um, the state government certainly hasn't provided any modelling to tell us what happens if and when the uh, federal government cuts this industry off, what's going to happen for uh, regional employment and for our uh, regional WA economy. Uh, as I said, 3,500 jobs will be lost in the first year. Um, so the, the government for jobs has not provided us with any modelling. Um, and the Minister for Agriculture has stated that her goal is to deliver a proper transition away from live export. And I think we're pretty well aware of that from having seen the footage of our Agriculture Minister standing on the Fremantle Bridge with her placards, with her friends there several years ago 
looking to ban the live export industry. So I think we've got a pretty good understanding of where she stands. And um, I certainly condemn, I condemn uh, the Honourable Alana McTiernan for uh, what I would say for what she hasn't done for the sector. That would be the way I would put it. Um, and when I look at some of the quotes that I've got here from uh, the countrymen and the West Australian, um, the state's two biggest farming groups accuse Ms McTiernan of undermining Emmanuel's ability to manage animal welfare on its ships. That was done when she raided. She raided, took it off her own, off her own bat to, to actually raid Emmanuel's, if you don't mind. Um, so sheep and cattle are on the ocean. Minister has taken away the tools Emmanuel need to maintain their control. This was what someone from the um, Emmanuel's spoke about. And then the WA uh, Farmers Livestock President, David Slade, said that despite the trade coming under federal jurisdiction, the State Minister appeared determined to disrupt it as much as possible. It is clear that the Minister is doing everything in her power to inflame hostility to the live export industry, he said. And I think this, this demonstrates how there was a, I guess you could say, a lack of trust. A lack of trust, and we saw the, uh, the, saw, we saw the headline uh, acting speaker, Are You Kidding? The West Australian newspaper. I think that, um, that pretty well described it there in a nutshell. So we've got an Ag Minister who is meant to act on behalf of our sheep industry, and all we get is the anti-argument. And we've, as I said, we've got our memory of the Minister standing on the, uh, on the Fremantle Bridge. And certainly, um, in summarising Acting Speaker, I, I condemn Joel Fitzgibbon and the way he only seems interested in the, quite frankly, the northern cattle industry. He has said, he has said oh, OK, we, we'll ban the sheep, uh, we'll phase out the live sheep export industry, but no problems with the uh, northern cattle industry, that's fine. That's the old eastern states uh, mantra. Not a problem up there in the northern uh, cattle industry. So we've got that. Um, he's left our WA sheep growers to hang out to dry. And I strongly condemn Bill Shorten, as I said, he hasn't been over the Darling Scarp for a couple of years, apart from his trip to Kalgoorlie for a couple of hours. And I condemn the way the um, Federal Labor Party should, which hopefully they won't, be elected on Saturday, um, and their destructive plan to um, phase out the uh, live export industry. And I call on the Premier, and I call on his Ag Minister to stand up and fight to save an industry and to s stick to your mantra of saving and creating jobs 